Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, I'm James McLean from Xavier. Um, I'm uh, on the R&D team there, and uh, I work on a variety of projects, uh, but I'd like to talk to, about this particular one. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, I just want to, uh, so let me just say that this uh, bus optimization project that we worked on uh, is uh, somewhat similar in concept uh, to the uh, work that you just heard about from Datakind. That is, uh, it's uh, work concerning uh, optimizing uh, school bus routes, uh, somewhat analogous to what you just heard. But I, I hope to, um, I hope to provide uh, some different, uh, I hope to be complimentary uh, to uh, some of what you just heard. Uh, before I proceed, I just want to uh, acknowledge uh, three of my colleagues uh, who uh, worked on this project also. Uh, Simon, who did a lot of the uh, data-related stuff. Uh, Esther uh, was the project manager, and uh, Rob uh, oversees uh, research activities at Azavia. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay, so um, Azavia is a, uh, a B corporation. Uh, which meaning that uh, not only do we have uh, a, a profit imperative, we also have uh, sort of a mission to um, take on projects that uh, have sort of a, a public good component to them. And uh, so this particular project uh, ties into that very strongly. Uh, well, uh, yeah, so I'll say that our, this is our mission, uh, to advance the state of geospatial technology uh, applying it particularly for civic, social, and environmental impact, uh, presumably positive impact. That was a joke. <laughs> um, I'm having trouble with my slide advancer. Right. Where should I be pointing? Uh, sorry about this, folks. Thank you, sir. OK, so uh, as I mentioned, because we have this uh, public good component to, the, to Azavia's mission, uh, we took on this project uh, in collaboration with the School District of Philadelphia. And so uh, the, the goal here was to try to uh, not only reduce the cost of operating the city of Philadelphia's um, school bus fleet, but also to uh, improve outcomes for students. That is, to reduce their writing time and uh, so on. So I, I'm just going to uh, talk about uh, some of the results we have. Uh, just to state the problem concretely, uh, so the, the school transportation, uh, as I said, we, they, the city of Philadelphia runs this bus fleet. Um, so in particular, uh, one of the things that they were uh, very interested in was uh, reducing the number of buses that are uh, required to deliver the students without uh, reducing uh, the quality of their experience too much, or if possible, uh, while improving that experience. And uh, so the issue is, is that you have uh, these school bus routes, which are designed by hand, by people. And um, part of that is just um, um, historical inertia. And part of it is also just the fact that these routes are actually somewhat more complicated to design than you might expect, uh, because um, the, the abstract problem is perhaps not that complex, but the, the practical problem is, that is, there's a lot of uh, regulatory stuff, um, concerns from parents, uh, many things that you might not imagine if you're looking at it purely abstractly. OK, so uh, the solution that we came up with was to try to address this using uh, constraint-solving software. And um, in particular, uh, uh, some of the technical decisions that we made were dictated by the fact um, that, as I mentioned, we have some of these um, somewhat complicated and arcane rules that, uh, that have to be obeyed. So um, we had to make sure that we uh, address this within a framework that would uh, permit us to um, encode those rules somehow. All right. 
And uh, so the, the, the test problem that we worked on was to work on a, a subset of the Philadelphia uh, uh, bus system, uh, a particularly troublesome subset that involved uh, some charter schools that are, I believe, in the far southwest of Philadelphia. And are, so they're sort of like in the very corner. But students, because they are charter schools, students come from all over the city to those schools. And so um, there's really some, in addition to being extremely expensive to, um, to transport the students, there was also like some really um, just amazing uh, statistics, like some students riding as many as three hours to get to these schools uh, in the morning and the evening, which is um, pretty, pretty tough to deal with, it sounds like. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start with the results, and then uh, time permitting, I'll perhaps uh, try to describe uh, how we achieved the results. Uh, so this is just a, a picture of the uh, existing routes prior to our work, just to give you some idea of what they look like. Uh, and so if you can see it, uh, you see the label Chester there at the bottom left. Those are, I believe, where those charter schools are. Uh, but you can see routes extending all the way up into the northeast uh, where uh, some students are coming from. So this is what I'm talking about uh, in terms of uh, students coming from all over the city to these, uh, to this, um, to these schools that are located sort of in an extreme uh, position. And uh, so this is a, a picture of what our optimized routes look like. Um, you're not necessarily supposed to extract any particular information from these pictures other than just to get a general idea of what, uh, what this looks like. Now, I'm, I have an animation here, which I hope survived, and it did. Um, so uh, again, just sort of as a um, anecdotal uh, datum, uh, the people at the school district told us that um, these routes that we generated uh, tend to be somehow more parallel to each other than routes that are generated by humans. That is, you'll frequently see buses sort of traveling in parallel together, whereas people tend to uh, produce routes where uh, one bus sort of covers uh, one particular spatial area and other buses tend not to be present there. So um, again, that's just sort of some anecdotal uh, qualitative information that you might find interesting or might not. Okay, so let me just go ahead and talk about the results that we uh, achieved for this particular um, exercise. So uh, the existing routes there are shown sort of on the left, optimized on the right. Uh, so you see an, an average ride time of 191 minutes. Um, so uh, we were able to reduce that to 182 minutes. But um, I just want to, well, I'll get to it in just a second. So other outcomes, uh, total bus active time down from 70 hours to 55 hours. Uh, total mileage down from 1,200 to 900 or so. And um, crucially, the total number of buses was reduced from uh, 22 to 18. Uh, so this is, uh, I guess, somewhat comparable to what you saw from the data kind presentation. I believe they had a, a decrease from, what was it, 38 to 33. So uh, percentage-wise, uh, our results are somewhat similar to that. Uh, now, this is important because, um, like the the annual cost of operating a bus is something like uh, $75,000 per bus. So um, even in this very small subset, uh, being able to uh, reduce uh, the number of buses by four was um, something that the school district was uh, pretty excited about. Now, I, I want to point out that um, although our sort of um, explicit goal, I suppose, was to reduce the uh, operational cost, uh, we were still at the same time, almost as a byproduct, uh, able to um, improve the uh, experience for the kids. Uh, one thing that I should say is, um, this is we're not sociopaths. Uh, it's just that we, we don't, for this uh, phase of the work, we didn't have the technical capacity to sort of optimize both of those goals at the same time. Uh, but um, being able to do that explicitly is something that we're interested in um, researching in the future that is being able to balance those two concerns. Um, student metrics, um, I'll fly by those, I think. So uh, I'll, this is just a, a graph that sort of uh, restates the same thing in a uh, slightly more visual way. 
So um, you see the, the red graph was the uh, existing routes, uh, ride times for the students. Uh, and you see the green graph uh, shifted uh, noticeably to the left there. OK, uh, so uh, let me just talk about the implementation. Um, I, I'll assume some background here. Uh, in, in particular, I'll assume some background that was covered by Datakind. Uh, but just to say that uh, this, we modeled this as a, uh, a variant of the traveling, a variant of the vehicle routing problem. And the vehicle routing problem is essentially a um, elaboration of the traveling salesman problem. Uh, in traveling salesman, you're trying to uh, construct a tour through a number of sites uh, that reaches all the sites but does so at minimum cost. In the vehicle routing problem, it's uh, very similar, except uh, you have uh, a fleet of vehicles and you're trying to make sure that you reach all the sites uh, at minimum cost. And of course, there are many variants to the vehicle routing problem, but that's just what it is abstractly. So um, th this is sort of what our model looks like. Uh, the, so we have uh, three basic components. Uh, the circles are basically school, school bus stops. And for this project, we were, um, we were allowed to move uh, stops around uh, if we found it to be advantageous. Uh, we, and then the uh, student pictures are, no surprise, uh, students. And then uh, the buses uh, are, are just buses that are uh, going to traverse through these nodes. And then finally, there's a, a school shown there. So the basic problem is to do sort of three things. Uh, first, to assign students to stops in a way that's uh, optimal or approximately optimal. A uh, second component is to construct a tour uh, through the stops by the buses uh, in such a way that all the students are picked up. Um, this is a bit complicated. Um, uh, a bit more complicated than the abstract problem because uh, there's, of course, capacity concerns uh, with these buses. That is, they can't carry more than 60 students. Uh, so that has to be taken into account. And of course, there's also the constraint that all the routes have to terminate at the school. Uh, otherwise, the students wouldn't get to school. <laughs> um, yeah, OK, so I think that that's, that's the basic model. And um, so we, we used a uh, open source uh, piece of software called OptiPlanner to accomplish this. And uh, very briefly, um, actually, I think, I, I think I'll cut it here, because I think I've given you the basic uh, picture of what we were trying to accomplish. Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't have time to uh, go into details. What I'll do is I'll just mention that all of this work was open source and was done with open source data to the extent possible. I'm advancing rapidly because I'm hoping to leave you on the slide where you can see the repo. And you can, there you go. You can visit this repo to examine the work if you like. Again, open source software. This is open source. It's based on the open source OptiPlanner framework. We use the open source OpenTrip Planner. Uh, we used open source data to the extent that we could. Uh, that is, um, the, the road data that we used are open source. Uh, the student data, of course, are, are not. Those are private. But um, uh, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say. Uh, please check it out. Okay.